This video will teach you how to add a slide mechanic to your character in Unreal Engine 5. First we need to create a keyboard input for our slide mechanic. To do this, open up the content browser and locate your input actions folder. Right click, then go to input, then select input action. Name this IA underscore slide. This input should be set to digital bool. Next, you can save and close this, then go back to the content browser and locate your input mapping context. Open it, then click the add button to add a new input. Go to the drop down and select our slide input action. Click the keyboard button, then press the key on your keyboard that you would like to use for this input. I'm going to use the left control key. Now you can just save and close this. Next, we're going to set up the slide mechanic for the character. So open the content browser and locate your character blueprint. Open it, then in some space, right click and add our slide input action. Expand it, then drag off the started pin and search for a launch character node. This node will be used to boost the player forward when they perform a slide. Next we need to calculate the launch velocity, which will determine the direction and strength of our slide. To do this, right click and search for get actor forward vector. This node gets the direction that our player is facing. Drag off it and search for a multiply. What we set as the X and Y value will determine how far the player slides. So we want to set these to something quite high, like 1000. I'm going to set the Z value to minus 250. This is just to ensure that the player stays on the ground when sliding. Now we've done that, connect it to the launch velocity pin. If you compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play. You will see that if you press your slide input, the player is launched forward. Next, we're going to work on adding our slide animation to the character. So go to the content browser and locate your slide animation. As you can see, my slide animation actually moves the character's position away from the root. For this system to work, we need the character in this animation to be fixed in place. So if your animation also looks like this, follow these steps to fix it. Go over to the asset details and search for root. Then set force root lock to true and enable root motion to false. Now the slide animation should be fixed in place. Now you can just save and close this. Next we need to turn this animation into an animation montage. So open the content browser, right click on your slide animation, go to create, then create anim montage. Name this am underscore slide. For now we don't need to do anything with this so we can just save it, then go back to the player character. We need to make it so that this animation montage plays when the player slides. To do this, drag in the character mesh, then drag off it again and search for play montage. Connect this to the started pin. Then also connect it to the launch character node. Go to the drop down and select our slide animation montage. Now if you compile and save then go back to the viewport and press play, the player will now perform the animation when you slide. We do have an issue where if you spam the slide input, the player will continuously slide forward which we don't want. We want to make it so that the player can only slide again once the previous slide has been completed. To do this go back to the player character and add a new variable. Call this is sliding. Drag it into the graph then click set then set it to true. Connect it between the play montage and the launch character nodes. Next we want to make some space, then drag in the variable again and set it. Leave this as false, then connect it to the uncompleted pin. So now when the animation starts, the is sliding variable is set to true, then when it ends, it is set to false. Next, make some space before the play montage, then drag in the is sliding variable and get it. Drag off it and search for a branch. Connect it to the started pin, then connect the false pin to the play montage. This makes it so the player can only slide if they're not already sliding. If you compile and save, then go back to the viewport and press play, you will see that you can no longer spam slide. Next, we're going to work on the player's collisions. We want to make it so the height of the player's collision capsule is decreased when they slide. This will make it so that they can slide under objects. So let's go back to the player character. To make it easier we're going to make it so that we can see the player's collision capsule. 
So select the capsule component, then go over to the details panel and search for hidden. Then disable hidden in game. Most other tutorials will use a set capsule half height node to manage the size of the collision capsule. The issue with this is the collision capsule scales up or down from its center point. This means that part of the character's mesh will be pushed into the ground. You can get around this by adjusting the position of the character mesh. However, this can be quite difficult and also look glitchy. The better way to go about this is to use the built-in crouch nodes, which allow you to easily change the half height of the collision capsule without the character glitching through the ground. So drag off after the set variable and search for a crouch node. Then at the end of our slide animation we want to drag off here and search for an uncrouch node. This will return our capsule half height back to normal. To adjust how tall the collision capsule is when sliding, click on the character movement, then in the details panel, search for crouch. Here you can change the crouched half height, but I'm just going to leave it at 40. Now if you compile and save then go back to the viewport and press play, you can see that when you slide the collision capsule is made smaller, then when you finish sliding it returns to normal. You may notice that it actually takes a while for the collision capsule to return to standing height after the slide. This is because the uncrouch is only triggered once the animation is fully complete. We want to make it so the uncrouch is triggered slightly before the end of the animation while the player is going from sliding to standing. To do this we're going to use a notify in our animation montage. So go back to the animation montage and pause the timeline. Next you want to move through the timeline till you find a point in the animation where the player is getting up, about halfway between the sliding position and standing position. Once you have found it, right click on the one track, go to add notify, then select montage notify. Move this into the right position, then you can rename it to something like stand. Now you can save this, then go back to the player character. Next we can disconnect the uncrouch from the oncompleted, then we want to connect it to the on notify begin. This will trigger when the notify is reached in our animation montage. We want to leave the set is sliding to false connected to the oncompleted pin. This is because we still want the full slide animation to occur before we can slide again. If you compile and save then go back to the viewport and press play, you will see that the capsule height now matches the slide animation much better. There is one thing to mention that because we're using the crouch and uncrouch nodes for our slide, by default there is a setting that won't allow our player to slide off of ledges. If you want to fix this go back to the player character, then select the character movement component. Then go over to the details panel and search for crouch. Here you can set can walk off ledges to true. The final thing we need to do is hide the player's collision capsule. So select the capsule component, then go over to the details panel and search for hidden then set hidden in game to true. Now if you compile and save then go back to the viewport and press play, your character should now have a fully functioning slide mechanic. If this video helped you please feel free to like and subscribe or support me on Patreon so that I can keep making these Unreal Engine tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.